Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Modern Skyblocks 2. So, since last episode, I have done a bunch more building, and um, we have a lot to cover today. Like, a lot. It's probably going to end up being two episodes, I'm going to record back to back. You can see right here, I did make a clipboard from Bibliocraft, and now they display in World, which is awesome. Um, so I did make one of those, we have a few things on the list here. Um, I haven't completely removed the the lower section just yet. It's mainly just a time thing. Um, but if we step out here, we have, like, okay, look at these chests. All ores from uh, both stone and then from netherrack, too. I've been crushing up netherrack. Uh, because there's certain, it's been mainly for, I needed some quartz for starters, but then it's also, it's primarily been for um, Silence Gems blocks, which we'll get into that because I'm pretty much building that structure over there out of Silence Gems. It's taken forever. Um, but anyways, if we step through here, you can see I have built a windmill. You guys haven't seen this yet. Um, so we have this big windmill. There's four windmills on it, um, you know, in each cardinal direction. And if we step inside, you can see there's some drawers out here, and that's all the mineral stuff, right? Mineral saplings, mineral blocks, uh, berries, chunks, and then right here is where mineral wood goes. Now, of course, harvesting mineral and stuff like that, that's not automated just yet. But if we step inside, I did just a really quick, easy setup for automation. Basically, um, the chunks, I've got pipes that pump in the chunks from our squeezers. And then I have a pipe over here, a transfer node, that pumps out. And right now, I just have them, they, they all have their own dedicated item lines for right now. Um, just because I had the space for it, it makes the transfer nodes run pretty quickly. So... Um, also, pipes pump up here with the blocks, so, um, but it's very straightforward, basically pipes come through with wood, they dump them into the squeezer, and then the liquid gets pumped out into these drying basins, there's two, you know, one for each squeezer set up, and I have fluid ducts here with servos pulling out the liquid, and then, uh, transfer nodes pump that out, and then there's a transfer node on the bottom, you can kind of see it down there, that pumps the chunks out and into, uh, that drawer over there. So, um, and then power, all the power is just fed from the windmills. So I've got this just always running because we have plenty of power from the windmills. If we head up here, you can see this is what it looks like up top. Now you'll notice this windmill is a little bit different. We're going to get into that in just a second um, because they changed the way windmills worked. Um, for example, if you take a look at windmill, there is no tier two windmill anymore, but there is this windmill sale and we're going to make some of those because they're a little bit expensive, I will say that, because if you look at the windmill sale, it takes um, six tough fabric, and each tough fabric is eight hemp fiber and a stick. And ideally, for maximum efficiency and maximum power, you need eight sails per windmill blade. So, um, also, I broke a bunch of crops since last episode, and we have red, red orchids, tons of them. I actually broke about 500 grass patches. <clears throat> And that's grown with plant matter, because plant matter actually makes larger grass patches than bone meal does. And I broke about 500 patches. I got a bunch of red orchids. I got zero ender lily seeds. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if it was if it was removed from dropping from grass within the pack, or what, but either that or just RNG just absolutely hates me. So, I just gave up on ender pearls, and <laughs> I'm happy with my, my red orchids at the moment. All right, so if we head over here, that there's nothing over there just yet. Um, I did do, oh, this is all glowstone. That actually took a while. Not all glowstone. Those those blocks right there are um, Vect or Vena, but, uh, or no, it's Vect. It's Vect, yeah. And then that's all glowstone through there, so. Uh, took It took a little while to make all that glowstone. Um, but I did do some chisel work, and we have kind of steps leading around here. It's still very, very rough here. As you can tell, I mean, half the walls are missing and stuff. Uh, but most of my time has been focused on this side of this building. So we'll head into here first. So through here, we have a smeltery. And it is a, um, it's four high. So altogether, it's a four by four by four interior dimensions. So decent size smeltery. I'm happy with it. Um, and this one is, I mean, we'll use it for gears, but eventually we'll have a separate smeltery automated for gears. This will mainly be a Tinker's Construct smeltery. So, and I did put a roof on it. Um, it's just seared bricks because we're going to eventually change this over to glass. 
I just haven't yet. So a glass front. This is going to be for the uh, liquid storage for Tinker's Constructs. So I went ahead and set up a base there, but um, haven't, haven't built that out just yet. And then over here, this is pretty much just all junk and metals and where I've been making silence gems, speckled blocks. Um, through here, we have a storage room that I'm working on. And we actually have down in here, I think it's, I think it's these. Or these, it doesn't really matter. It's one of these are frame trim um, that I colored using the uh, the framing table over there. So I haven't moved everything up here. You can see there's ink sacks, there's flint, and then there's a bunch of crops set up around here. And then um, over here is trees and saplings and stuff like that. Um, and then back in here is the the two by two drawers. And I'm thinking about doing some two by ones maybe on this stretch. So we'll have a little bit of two by ones, two by twos, and then just some solid, some solid ones. So, because the main thing I think I want to store in these, and some of these will eventually change to compacting drawers, or I may do the compacting drawers in a separate, a separate room that kind of is built to match them. Because you can't really color them with a the framing table, I don't believe. I don't believe they've ever added any way to do that. I may end up having like a separate little sub room that's connected up. So we will do some work in here, adding a drawer controller, because we're at the point now where drawer controllers and some of that stuff is fairly cheap. So, um, and then let's see if we head through here. Back here is our coke oven and our blast furnace. I have laid out spaces for two more of each. Um, I just haven't made them yet because they're a little bit expensive. And this place is <laughs> such a mess. All this snow has been terrible. And then we have a room over here that I've started working on. But it takes a while to build this because it takes. Um, it's mainly a lot of black speckled onyx, black speckled opal, um, and then we've got black speckled amber and black speckled citrine um, that is the ceiling, or not black speckled, but speckled citrine bricks um, from Silence Gems. And citrine only comes from nether rack. So it has been, it has been a little bit of a process <laughs> building this out. And then lastly, if we pop up here, and I've decided to set this up here because it doesn't really match my build. I don't want cactus outside. And I think cactus farms look clunky when you set them up outside. So I've actually set cactus up up here. This is like a subfloor, like a midfloor between this lower floor and there's going to be an upper floor up here. And so I decided we put some automation in here for right now. That's going to be kind of out of sight, like, you know, this isn't pretty. I don't want this in the house. And... Then eventually we'll change it over and we're going to put them in compact machines. But we don't have the resources right now to make compact machines. I'm super excited. If you guys have never played with compact machines, it was a big thing um, back in... I can't remember the last time I played it. Was it 1.7 maybe? Or was it 1.6? It's been a while um, since I actually ran into compact machines in a pack. But it is in this pack. And we will be using compact machines to put things like our cactus farm and probably our sugarcane farm and stuff like that. Eh, I don't know. I can make sure cane farm looks kind of pretty and kind of match out there. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but anyways, we have a drawer here. Basically, all the conveyors just feed into this drawer. And we have about a 1,000 cactus. And we also have like another 2,000 cactus <laughs> downstairs and a bunch of loose cactus around. But we're going to be using this probably today. So if we take a look at the clipboard, we have some things on here. We have the Terra Terra Bozu. We're going to be automating that probably first off, um, which is going to take a little bit of advancements. We're going to have to get into Batania just a little bit today. Um, then we have Tinker's Tools on this list. Auto Charcoal Plant Matter. That's going to be a major thing. Ore Processing Automation. Um, we need to do a couple minor things with the drawers and then make our one probe. And actually we'll probably start with these two things first and then move into the Terra Terra Bozu because both of these things are fairly quick. Um, and I know Sveard suggested, since I've got Op on the server, he suggested just shutting off the rain. I don't generally like using cheats. Um, Unless I just have to, you know, like for, for example, killing all those villagers on uh, Divine Journey the other day. But like he said, it's really, it's not a for gain kind of thing. It's more of just for you guys. So if, if it does happen to snow while I'm recording, I'll shut that off for you guys. <laughs> so, okay. So anyways, um, let's go ahead and get into the, I guess the one probe first. I've been dying for this thing. Um, and what we're going to make is, there's like the one probe right here, and then there's the readme, and then there's the bauble. And that's what we want, is the bauble. Um, basically it requires a one probe with gold nuggets, and that requires just a comparator, which is just stone, redstone torches, nether quartz. So we're at the point now where nether quartz is not an issue in the least. So let's just pop over here, let's grab some nether quartz, and I'm going to have to get some... Actually, I've got stone right here. You'll notice I've started making tools out of diamond. Um, 
and that's just because we have lots of diamonds. <laughs> like, we have so many. Actually, I think I can chisel these. Because I was using those for that build, and then I don't need them anymore. Um, and then we're going to need just... Let's go ahead and do, like, five pieces of quartz. Because I am going to need this for the drawer controller as well. Basically, we're going to... We have to make, um, what, three... Comparators? Probably five by the end of the episode, I think. And all that stuff cleans up the same, so... Just a heads up. Okay, and then I just need some wood. And... Well, I was going to say, probably by next episode I'll have everything moved up here, but no, because I'm probably going to end up recording two roughly back-to-back -back episodes. I am going to make some more drawers and stuff, but um, because some of these things, like the auto ore processing, I've been dying for that. <laughs> so I would like to get that set up. Now, I don't know of a way off the top of my head. I did, I did a little bit of messing around in the test world with like fluid ducts and transfer nodes and things like that, but nothing seems to auto-fill the cauldron. Um, with water so what we're probably gonna have to use is maybe mechanical users they can do it um, so that's probably what we'll end up making in regards to that uh, let me just make a bunch of redstone torches we're gonna need them all right so comparators there's five that works out well and then for the one probe item we just need gold nuggets let's grab that and actually one other thing that I want to make today requires gold nuggets so it's gonna work out all right, let's get our one probe, and then let's just upgrade it to the one probe bobble slot headpiece thing. And we're just going to put it uh, right here. What's this? To Asgard bobblehead. What? <laughs> what is this? Hey, it's me! It's a little me. What? What in the world? Where did you come from? Can I put you on a wall? Yeah, I can just put you on a wall. Huh. Okay. I'll just put him right there. It's a little it's a little me. <laughs> it's my mini me. Okay. But anyways, now if you look up there, we have tool tips. We now have tool tips, which is it's going to make life so much easier. Because when I first started building this, of course it's not an issue anymore because I've made so many of these blocks. Like I remember that's citrine, that's onyx, that's amber. Um and then up there is opal, you know. But when I was first making this, I I would use all the blocks and then I'd Go do something else for a minute. I come back and I'd be like, "Oh, wait a second! <laughs> what was this block down here?" And then I'd have to break it, and you know, it was it was a headache. So now now life in general will be a bit easier. It's a lot of uh, quality of life stuff today. So we'll go ahead and mark that off of our list. We're gonna start using this a lot moving forward. So especially the fact that it renders in game, and if you place it down, it renders. And um, though I will say that Sphere, and I was showing it to him, and he placed it down on a piece of cobble, and it. He crashed. I didn't crash, but he crashed from a rendering error, so um, I'm not for sure. I've got to do some testing. That was actually just a minute ago, so I haven't actually tested it myself, but I tend to pack them around because I like having them on hand. But um, Anyways, next up, let's get a drawer controller to make cleaning this stuff up much easier. So for this, we're just going to need a drawer of any kind, some stone, and some diamond. So we'll grab ourselves a diamond. we still got 19 dirty diamonds I have to clean up. <laughs> So, cleaning, cleaning this stuff is just a pain right now because it's so manual. Like shift right click, shift right click, shift right click. And I think I've got, yeah, I've got stone on me and I have over here somewhere, yeah, right here. I brought up a bunch of those like random drawers that we had made before, so there is our drawer controller. And while we're at it, I want to go ahead and get a drawer key. And so that's going to be sticks, gold, and gold nuggets. Do I still have, didn't I just make a bunch of sticks? Or am I crazy? I'm getting low on wood because making all these drawers, <laughs> I went through... Like, I was taking just, like, stacks of wood blocks and turning them into chests. Like, it has been so expensive. Alright, so let's get ourselves just some drawer upgrades. And then I'm going to need... Um, how many gold? It's two gold ingots. I need to make more ores, too. I've been steadily wearing down on those, but that's fine. We made so many, like, before I started the move that I haven't had the dire need to make any more right now but we're definitely getting there so the drawer controller this is all spaced out um the drawer controller's range is like it's a 25 by 25 by 25 um diameter around it so um this is all spaced out it's like if i recall correctly it's like 20 20 blocks wide 20 by 20 or something like that um, but it does all fit into here all the drawers all the way around will fit 
Um, so if we put this down, right like this, and then just we'll just right click it, and that's going to lock all of our drawers, and everything should be connected. That's one thing I wanted to test right here, is make sure that everything is connected. This is a very easy way to test it. And really, I guess I could just look on this one on the last, because it kind of goes around like a snake. Um, but it is all connected. Because what I'm thinking is you'll walk in here, and then you'll come over to here, and there'll be like maybe like a crafting terminal and a drawer controller right here, long term. So, And we'll have access to everything, and then there we go. So, Okay, so now I can just, of course, right-click. And I don't have anything on me, but... If I grab ink sack, right click it on the door controller, it goes into the correct drawer. So also a very nice, quick, quality of life thing. It's going to make moving things so much easier and sorting out that room and whatnot. All right, now one other thing that I want to make, just one other quick random item, is I want a golden lasso. <laughs> like so bad. Because I have all those like loose animals running around, right? And... I want to start being able to move them and put them places without having to lead them. Um, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and gather up this industrial hemp because this stuff is... You know, those those sales, they're not expensive, but man, they take so much industrial hemp that if you don't have it automated... I mean, I've been gathering this stuff up like constant, like a stack per harvest, generally. Um, I don't think this one's quite as much. That's 42, but... I have been gathering up so much industrial hemp and... It's not even, I mean, we'll probably finish up at least one, maybe two windmills, but still, it's so expensive. So we'll go ahead and get our golden lasso, and of course it does use eight levels, so there we go, we're down to 31, that's fine. It's probably one of the, it's one of those items that's like, you gotta have this, right? Like, whenever you can get a golden lasso, get a golden lasso. Alright, I love that. Oh, my flax seeds did not... Oh, I don't think I have a spot for flax seeds, do I? Nope. Um, I guess... It's one of those things, like, do I really want to keep this? I'm going to keep it, whatever. We'll put it right there. That's fine. Okay. And, of course, Golden Lasso, what we can do is we can just right-click an animal, pick it up, and move it. Just one of those quick, easy, quality-of-life things. Plus, with me moving everything up here, I'm going to want to move my animals... Once I make some little pins for them. And so that's definitely something that I wanted to have for that purpose. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to show you how the windmills work. Because it's really interesting. It's so much different than it used to be. But I tell you what, we're going to make some windmill cells. And I've got, I think, seven or something that I made over there. So we'll go pick those up in a second as well. Those tough fabrics. Okay, there's 40 tough fabrics. And I'm definitely going to need more... So we'll get another, um, there we go. There's another 40 tough fabrics. That'll be fine for right now. And then I've got, I think it's seven or something that I made over here. Yeah, seven tough fabrics. Okay, and what we're going to make is these windmill sails. Um, because if you recall, in immersive engineering in the past, you would just make, like, basically a tier two windmill, right? Like, the one we're using right now is, like, the tier one, uh, more or less like just the straight wood and then you would upgrade it to have the cloth fabric on the blades and it would cause it to be you know it would, it would collect air a bit quicker not collect air but um, basically get more force off that air and it would spin faster and create more energy well the tier two was removed and now you do it in world so you have like right over here i've got you know four blades that are covered and what i can do is just right click these and you'll notice that this one has sped up a bit like, when you compare that speed to that, that's running much faster. Much, much faster. And it's producing energy relevant to the amount of blades that are covered. It's producing more energy than this windmill over here. So, fully covered, I mean, these produce... I don't exactly know the exact numbers. I haven't tested it. But they do produce more power. And they're much more effective than <laughs> this stinky little wood one over here. So, just kind of upgrading these as I go. Um, we need, what, 14 more? sales to finish this out but what's cool is these the detail on these new windmill blades is awesome like if you look i mean you can even see like where the i don't know the metal bar the metal screws go into the blades and i mean i think they look really nice and so much better than those little wooden <laughs> little dinky wooden blades but so now that that's done let's move over to the terra terra bozu 
And I want to prioritize this because not only me, but other people on the server have been really requesting it to put it in because it's been raining like constantly on our server. Uh, however, to do that, we are going to have to get into Batania, which means we are going to have to make floral fertilizer. So we're going to have to get ourselves some red dye, some yellow dye, some blue dye, and some enriched bone meal. Enriched bone meal is just bone meal with rotten flesh. So let's go get the bone meal first. The dyes are not an issue because I have tons of dandelions. I have tons of poppies. I have tons of lappies. Like we're talking like I haven't cleaned it yet. I do have some that's clean. Probably enough cleaned um, for our needs today. But I have a lot of lappies. Like lappies is so common. <laughs> like I have like eight or nine stacks or something of dirty lappies. But yeah, like for example, like this llama. <clears throat> We can just right click him and now we have a golden lasso with a llama in it. So that way I can move the animals around a little bit easier. So I don't know why I'm looking in here. All the rotten flesh is over here. And we'll go ahead and just get, there's a stack 20 of enriched bone meal. That stuff's like super cheap. So I do need to get the mob farm set back up fairly soon. Actually, I need to take that with me, um, which we will do that, but like the new mob farm design, but I haven't started building it yet. But I'm just tired of everything. Like, it snows constantly on here. I'm also having a small issue with ice. And it's weird because, like, the glowstone's like, right next to it. And it's just like, nah, we're putting ice right here. There's five stacks of lapis. And then we've got another 26 right there. <laughs> so, I've got so much lapis. Like, I have, I'm far from needing lapis at this point. Um, let's see, we have 379 dandelions and 178 poppies. Dandelions are a lot more common than poppies. Okay, so I'm just going to break these down. We'll get some red dye. Actually, I've got beets. I don't know why I didn't choose beets, but I guess it doesn't really matter. It's all the same, but... Because beets are red dye, basically. And we'll just get 15 floral fertilizer. And let me throw all this stuff in here. I don't think I'm ever going to have much use for this. Oh, aluminum, alchemical dust. I love this this little this little Asgard. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and grow some flowers. And there's our sky of beginning achievements. But anyways, for the Terra Terra Bozu, the main thing I need is white. I do believe. Um, I'm gonna eventually have to get all the flower colors, but for right now, just white will be fine. I'm gonna dump a bit of this stuff into here that we're not using right this moment. And I made this iron chisel and I haven't even used it because I ended up using the saw instead to cut stuff down. So I'm going to go ahead and grow a few more of these flowers because I would like to just get flowers until we have them all. I'll probably just use all this for a fertilizer, honestly, because I don't think there's any other use really. Oh, red string neutrifier. But... Oh, and it's interesting. I was looking earlier because I was thinking, well, I could use a hopper hawk for one build, but we're going to go a different route. But I was looking because... The hopper, the hopper hawk, the red string, or the, not the red string, but the redstone root requires destabilized redstone in this pack. Absolutely crazy. Um, let's go ahead and actually break one of these down. And what I want to do is just plant these down because we're going to need some white petals. And now that we have all the, all the uh, flower colors, we'll just go ahead and grow these. Tall mystical flowers, one of my favorite, favorite features of Batania. And then... We'll get these tall mystical white flowers, and I'll tell you what, my inventory's shot. And I dumped all the ones in the drawer, so these are all ones that don't have a place. Yep, there's all 16 colors of flowers. All right, and then what I'll probably do is do like a drawer above it that has the petals, and a drawer above it that has the the dyes, and then a little bit later on we'll automate all of those. It's a very very simple process, so. Alright, but anyways, we have some mystical white petals, and then what I wanted to go for is the Petal Apothecary, of course. So, this is standard. Okay. <laughs> it's so much, like, after coming, you know, because of course I'm always, like, bouncing between this and Divine Journey, right? And, like, I just recently made the Petal Apothecary on Divine Journey, and it was, like, crazy expensive, like, to get into Batania, because it's all progression-based and everything. So, coming over here and, like, it being standard, it's like, whoa, really? <laughs> like, seriously? Oh, you know what? One of the things that I would like to get right now, just so I can have some water in here and not worry about it freezing or anything like that, I want a, uh, not a whale, a sink. 
one of the the well from Pam's Harvest Craft is, disa is disabled. The sink isn't. So, oh wait, I can't make that. Never mind. Scratch that. <laughs> those are those iron buckets. I swear. Okay. Well, I tell you what. Let's go ahead and get ourselves um, some seeds. Just two seeds will be fine. Uh, for right now. I really only need, well, you know what? I'm going to need endo flames as well. Indoor flames. Um, which is just brown petals, red, and light gray. And I'm going to go ahead and make a fair few endo flames um, to get us started to help speed up mana production at the start. So let's go ahead and get like, I'll make like eight of them. We'll do two pure daisies and then like eight endo flames to get started. Um, and we're not going to worry about automating it, the mana production and all that, this episode. But that's mainly because I have a lot of stuff that's higher priority at the moment than automating mana generation. Gotta go get some more bone meal, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and get this other stuff started first. So, four mystical white petals and a seed gets us our pure daisy. And let's go ahead and get one more of those. Um, and then it's right click with an empty hand. Honestly, I find just dropping the stuff in there is quicker, <laughs> in my experience. Because you tend to have the menu up, and plus you're going to have to drop the seed and everything anyways, so... I just go Q, 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 and drop all the stuff in there, and it's done. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and get some stone. I've got eight paces, that's fine for getting us started. I've got more downstairs, we'll get that stuff moved up, um fairly soon because what we're going to be automating today is going to help with that and then we'll just get some wood i'm going to use jungle wood because that's what i have the most of generally when i'm harvesting wood for use i'm either using like spruce jungle or um, dark oak i've gotten to where i use dark oak because i don't have to pillar up to break it it tends to all be right there and you still get like a stack um a stack of wood so all right, we'll go ahead and put down our pure daisy. Let's get this thing running because we're going to need, of course, mana spreaders and mana pools and stuff. Because we are going to need just a little bit of mana today. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and get ourselves some endo flames. And it was uh, two brown and then one of each other. So, and there you go. There's eight endo flames. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and get our living rock. And our living wood, of course, I don't have an axe on me, but most of the stuff you can just break by hand. My, my axes always break on me, and then I just <laughs> just go barehanded after that. All right, so let's get a mana pool. And then, is the mana spreader any different? Um, no, it's just a petal, some gold, and some living wood. Okay, all right, so mana spreader, there we go. Okay, and I'm not too worried about making a living wood or a wand right now, I don't think. And that's just because, eh, don't really need it right this second. Um, now the mana pool for right now, this is temporary spot, but I'm going to put the mana pool right here. And there's a reason for that. We'll get into that in just a second. And then we're going to put our mana spreader just right there. That's fine. And it's going to be, by default, it's going to be pointing to this mana pool because um, it's directly in front of it. And then we'll just put our endo flames down just around it like that. And I don't think I have any charcoal up here. Let me pop downstairs. Let me grab some charcoal. I know the charcoal drawer, like since last episode, I've used about a thousand charcoal making all this stone, like, because I'm having to use stone to break down for silence gems. And then in addition, I'm having to use stone to make speckled bricks. And there's a little bit of... Honestly, there may not even be any charcoal in this drawer. Oh, there is. There's seven pieces. Yes. But I have used probably close to a thousand charcoal since last episode. But I do have this, so. There's five charcoal blocks. I would like to get just like eight charcoal blocks. So let me grab that out of there. Go. And by the way, what does it take to make... Alchemy Catalyst is... Oh... We could get those if we go to the nether. Yeah, I think we'll have to head to the nether this episode. I totally forgot that I'm going to need an alchemy catalyst. So we'll go ahead and drop down our charcoal. There we go. That's going to start running and producing some mana for us. Oops. Okay, so now I'm going to have to get together some obsidian. I've got three pieces on me, or three pieces. 
in here, but we're going to need that a little bit later on, but for right now I can use it. Um, because we are going to need a catalyst, I mean a, yeah, an alchemy catalyst to get this set up. Oh, and by the way, down here where our combustion setup is, I wanted to show you real quick, because we're going to need some netherrack um, as well for whenever we go to the nether. And I've got this set up, by the way, a stack of cobblestone and 24 blaze powder gives you a stack of netherrack if you want the numbers. But I've just got a redstone clock here that's set up, so that way I can just toss the stuff in. It just makes life a little bit easier. Okay, we've got our obsidian now. A little bit extra. One one extra piece. That's fine. Um, I didn't take the three from the chest, so we still have that for later. Uh, but for right now, we're going to set up our portal just right over here, and this is probably going to get moved at some point. Once I figure out more of a long-term place for it. But let's go ahead and just build ourselves a nether portal, and we're going to head into head into the nether. And, oh yeah, we're going to need a flint and steel, right? And I'm pretty sure that we can make that now. I believe it requires steel and flint. Okay. Not a problem. And let's go ahead and get this crafted. Nether unlocked. Okay. I guess it was locked before. <laughs> And now we can now we can go to the nether. Like I wonder if since it said nether unlocked, I wonder if um like somebody else had had a nether portal if I couldn't go into it until Cause I know I think uh Ryan's got a nether portal. Yeah, I know he does, because he's got a pigman farm set up. Alright, we got the we need to go deeper achievement. And let's go ahead and just build this out. Just kind of like a little small platform here. I should have brought some of my builder's wands with me. Because I made a bunch of them um, earlier. Like I have a ton of them that I made on accident. Because I was meaning to make a uh, stone rock grinder at the time. And instead I made uh, builder's wands. <laughs> okay, but let's go ahead and we're going to come out um, from right here. We'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, we're going to come out 25 blocks. And then we'll go ahead and just fill this in real quick. Like so. And I'm going to go ahead and just light it up. It's fine. And then what I want to do is I want to build like a little bit of a border here. So, because I want just a small little spawning platform for blazes. But I want them to be kind of enclosed. So that we don't get fired on when we're not ready for it. And right now we're just going to have it just be manual kill that's fine and then we'll upgrade it later on for you know automatic or something so we'll do just like that that's fine it's not even at all but <laughs> not too worried about that and we'll just put down some blocks so they can't fire at us through the wall and then we'll do it up like that and then we're gonna put just a little roof on this just so they can't fly out. I may not have enough blocks on me right now to do it all, but that's fine. Oh wow, we got a bunch of zombie pigmen spawning over there. But blazes can only spawn on netherrack. So that's why we're gonna we're gonna put netherrack down as the floor over there. Okay, it's semi-contained now. <laughs> I've gotta finish putting in uh, some stuff. I am gonna go ahead and light this up. I don't know of anything that would spawn that couldn't normally spawn because I know pigmen can spawn regardless but eh, we'll light it up just for the sake of lighting it up if nothing else and then let's go ahead and put down just a netherrack floor okay so there we go we have like a little netherrack platform now let me go grab some more cobble real quick and go ahead and light that up so many pigmen <laughs> just spawning through here which, of course, I could harvest them for gold nuggets. That's an option. Oh, wow, I got a magma slime coming out of there. All right. Um, but I'm not too worried about it because gold is really simple to craft. So I'm not I'm not going to bother with a pigman farm right now. More than anything, I just want blaze rods right this second. <laughs> because I would like to get the Terra Terra Bozu up and going because, honestly, this weather is just, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Now there's a chance that when we get back through, there's going to be some blazes that have spawned. That's fine. I'll just kill them um, with my rock and stone sword. 
We will get into tankers. I don't know if we'll get into it this episode. It'll probably be next episode. Because on the priority system, Terra Terra Bozu is such a major priority at the moment. Let me light that up too. Okay, there we go. Now we have like a little netherrack area. And I am going to build kind of a... Uh, a couple little walls in here because it, it helps to hide from like blaze attacks and stuff like that. Um, at least for right now until we make some like proper tinkers tools. Alright, and I'm just going to go wait. I removed the lights. I don't think it actually matters for blazes, but just to be on the safe side. I went ahead and removed the lights. So I'm going to give that some time to spawn some blazes and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I did get killed by a ghast. He just spawned, like, I was half AFK, and he just spawns, and he's just like, boom, you're dead. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and head on in here. And I do hear some blazes. Oh, there's one. Two of them. In fact. Oh, no, no. I'm dead. <laughs> oh, man. I hate zombie Pikmin. I hate them. Because <laughs> they spawn just so dense and like... I don't think there's any way to stop them from spawning. I think you've just got them. So, honestly, I may end up needing to automate blaze uh, blazes before too long. But, I mean, really, once we get a tinker's... A good tinker sword... Are you serious? Like, they're still aggressive? Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. This is going to be fun. Okay, cool. Look at this army of zombie pigmen. Like, I blocked them off. But they still managed to find a way through. Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> Come on! They, like, never de-aggro. Like, they just stay on you. Okay, I'll just get them all in the pit here. Okay, I think I've lost them. <laughs> I do believe that I have lost them. I'll just store them up there for the time being. Now let's see if we can get just a few blaze rods now. Like, there we go. There's one. And of course that blaze would be like back in the pit of pigmen here. Okay, I went ahead and fully like closed this off. So that if pigmen are up top, they're not going to come in and drop down on us. Because that was where a lot of that horde came from. Because, I mean, there's a lot of pigmen up top. Oh man, there's a bunch of blazes in here now. And a bunch of pigmen. Oh no! <laughs> no! I don't want it! We'll just send them all to the overworld. And then I'll just deal with them there. Okay, I got the blaze rods that we need. We just need two of these. So it's not too bad. Um, and then let's get together that. Let's go ahead and craft our two alchemy things. Brewing stands. And then let's see. I did add some more windmill cells too. I almost got that third one done. I think it's missing like two or something like that. And I was just editing the footage down. I know this episode's running a little bit late, but uh, that's okay. Because we want to get this stuff set up. So brewing stands, four living rock, two gold, and a mana pearl. Okay, and then for the Terra Terra Bozu, there's a couple things that we're going to need for this. Um, it is mainly string and then a sunflower. And that's why we need the alchemy catalyst is for the sunflowers. Um, but this is string ran through a mana pool. So let's get like eight pieces. It looks like it took a lot of mana on here. But I think it's just the way that the mana is displayed. It's always hard to read that stuff. So we'll get eight pieces of string. Hopefully we have enough mana to do all this. If not, I'll just let it run through some charcoal real quick. That's not really a problem. But it did just run through like eight blocks. Okay, so we got enough. And then we'll get our two pieces of mana weave cloth. And honestly, I might go for mana weave robes. Like it's my first actual armor set. Because we do need some armor, but... Um, okay, that living rock's done. So we'll get our alchemy catalyst. The majority of the work for getting this set up is actually just getting the Terra Terra Bozu. Or not the Terra Terra Bozu, but the, uh, the Alchemy Catalyst. Um, oh yeah, I need a Mana Pearl. Let me go get Ender Pearls. I think I've got like five to my name right now. It's not great, but it's not terrible either. 
And once we get our mob farm set back up, I did add to this uh, this clipboard, if you take a look, you'll see on there, new mob farm and blaze mob farm. That's two other things that I would like to get set up fairly soon. Because once we get a blaze mob farm set up, and have it up and running and everything, um, I mean, we could technically get all of our blaze powder through that. Which, I mean, really, blaze powder is not hard to do because we're at the point now where we can uh, combust flint. And flint is one for one uh, to make gunpowder. And then, of course, gunpowder, turn that into blaze powder and then you're set. So, I mean, really, I think at this point, the two things that I will probably need the most is going to be... Um, just ender pearls since I can't seem to get an ender lily and then bones I am going to need bones but um, since this is server wide I imagine some people will lend me bones if we run out of bone meal but I will say I mean this thing's gonna last forever on just a little bit of bone meal so that shouldn't be a problem all right so there is our alchemy catalyst and then what we need to do is just get a flower I'm gonna go with uh, I don't know, it doesn't really matter I'm gonna go with a poppy I'm going to go with a poppy and we'll just set the alchemy catalyst up below the mana pool. Let's go ahead and change this over. There is a blue orchid. There's allium, azure blay, red tulip, orange tulip, white tulip. Basically, we just have to go through this whole process. There we go. We got ourselves a sunflower now. Um, and then let me get some bone meal. There's a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and break this stuff down for more bone meal. And probably between this episode and next, I am going to do a bit more alchemy catalyst ding it won't take very long but i want all the two by two or the two tall flowers right because then what we can do is any two tall flower just bone meal it and you get an extra so i'm gonna go ahead and just make up a bunch of sunflowers there we go okay and then we will craft our teru teru bozu okay so by default what he does is he makes it so that storms and stuff they last about half as long, and they last much shorter duration, right? But if you right-click them with a sunflower, it will shut off the the rain or the snow or, you know, basically it snows when it rains, so it'll shut that stuff off for us. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to set him up. I was, I'm thinking, I think I want him, like, right over here. Let me grab a piece of dirt because I am going to want to set down this sunflower. I'll just steal a piece of dirt from this. Because I think next episode, we're probably going to do the cactus setup, and then the following episode, we'll do the ore processing. Because that's not as high a priority as the cactus, the plant matter and stuff. I'd like to get that first. And actually, let me go ahead and turn this into grass. Oh, never mind. I was going to turn it into grass, my infusion thing's all the way down there, and I don't feel like going down there to get it right this second. So, um, whoops, I want him there. Um, I'm going to put the Terra Terra Bozo down. Uh, we'll put him, like, right here. And then the next thing that I'm going to want is going to be an open crate. And that should just use living wood planks. So we should have enough lying over here. And let me go ahead and grab that comparator. Let me grab the obsidian. Anyways, living wood. And let's get ourselves just an open crate. And then I'm also going to want a dispenser, which is a bow. I've got sticks, okay. Let's see, open crate, dispenser. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need an item collector. That's the other thing that I'm gonna want. And I'm gonna go with the advanced item collector. This is gonna take a hopper, um, ender pearls, obsidian. I think I've got a hopper lying around somewhere that I'm not using, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make a new one. That's fine. And then there's our item collector. And then for the advanced item collector, it's just a redstone torch and then two glowstone um, to get that. So let me let me pop downstairs and get our glowstone. And then I'll probably go ahead and grab um, my infusion thing while I'm down there. And that way that we can uh, turn that into grass. I'd much rather have grass sitting there than just dinky dirt. Okay, so there is our advanced item collector, and now we've got pretty much everything that we need for this. And the reason I'm going with an advanced item collector is the advanced item collector you can filter. And I don't want to be maybe in here or something like that, drop an item, and then it pick it up. Or be doing the farm stuff and it pick it up. I want it to just pick up sunflowers, right? Um, let's go ahead and infuse that. 
I'm actually going to shift the Terra Terra Bozo to like right here, in fact. So he'll just be hanging out right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come up um, and put our open crate like right there. So there we go. And then let's go ahead and just put, um, we'll put our dispenser right here. And we'll go ahead and load this up with some bone meal and I'll add some more of it. I've got more bones over there. So we'll put that in there and then let's plant a sunflower just right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put an advanced item collector just right here on top of this. Uh, radius 5, 5, 5, that's fine. And then let's get... And by the way, there is this rain shield. It's a cheaper method, but I want something for the whole server instead of just, instead of just for us. So, And then we're going to need an item filter. Uh, this is just paper and then some yellow dye. So let me pop over here. Let me get some of that. And I'm going to basically just tell it that all it can pick up is sunflowers. And that way, whenever sunflower gets bone milled and, you know, gets created and all that, then it's going to pick that up and drop it through the open crate onto the Terra Terra Bozu. So there we go. Item filter. And then let's just right-click it, set it as sunflowers, check metadata. That's whitelist. Okay. And then we're going to just pop this into here. Surprised it hasn't rained yet. Slash snowed. Um, and then, let's see, what kind of block? I'm going to put a comparator facing out of this Terra Terra Bozu, for starters, because whenever it starts storming, the Terra Terra Bozu will emit a redstone signal um, through that comparator. And then let me just get like a block. I'm going to get like a piece of stone and chisel it for mossy. And what's going to happen is that redstone signal will then travel to the block, activate the dispenser, which is going to dispense red uh, bone meal onto the sunflower and cause it to get bone mealed. So I'm going to toggle rain on. Um, I don't remember the command for this. Is it, is it toggle downpour? No. Is it toggle rain? No. Weather rain? There we go. But yeah, you'll notice that, oh, the item collector is not picking it up. There we go. It saved it. It's weird. I had to set it like a few times before it would finally save it. So now if I did that, it picks it up. Okay. And it feeds it straight into the open crate. So there we go. It's just, it was weird. Like I had to set it like three or four times before it would finally do it. So then, okay, if I set it to weather rain, there we go. You see the rain gets turned off right there. So now the server doesn't have to worry about rain anymore. And I believe, let me double check, but I believe this whole setup is chunk loaded. Actually, yeah, it should be because it's right between the farms. Yeah. So now the server, anytime it starts to rain, that's going to activate and it's going to shut off that rain, even when I'm not online, you know. So now we don't have to worry about all this rain and snow because it has been just back-to-back -back rain. And it's been so frustrating for everybody. Everybody's like, oh man, here comes the rain again, you know. And so I wanted to get that sorted today. So let's do it one more time. Weather rain. And it's going to start snowing on us and then it's gone. Before the snow even starts to get dense, it's gone. So I am happy with that. Let me get some more bone meal to make sure that this thing runs, you know, even when I'm not online and whatnot. And the nice thing is now I feel comfortable enough. Oh, these stupid feathers. Chickens everywhere. Um, I feel comfortable enough that I can actually clean up the snow <laughs> all over here because it looks terrible. I hate... Like, I like living in the snowy areas, and I wish I could let it snow and it not just pile up snow and everything. Or if I was living somewhere where my outside stuff wasn't as important. Like, I could just walk out here and there'd be snow on the ground, that would be fine. But um, with our current setup, I don't want it snowing. Plus, um, I've noticed that it can actually snow on top of these red orchids. I lost a lot of red orchids. Um, by the way, they change it so they can't be planted next to each other. Like, if I plant something here, it'll break the blocks. Or if I put a torch down right here, it'll break the blocks. Um, but they did change the... Or they made it... I don't know. I don't remember ever doing this before, but I don't generally live in the snow. But the snow can actually cover over the red orchid and destroy it. So, like, it'll just snow on top of it and kill it. Now, it doesn't have to be planted on redstone ore, as you notice. I mean, it grows fine on dirt, so... Um, and it does work with, like, plant matter and stuff. Get out of here, you. Anyways, it works fine with plant matter and everything, but I wanted to get rid of that snow because I've got those torches there so it can't 
Um, it can't snow over my red orchids, but uh, I did want to get that sorted. So, um, but anyways, I am happy with that. I will say that this amount of bone meal will last a long time because you know it's only one bone meal per time that it rains. So it's really not that bad. Um, it's not terribly expensive, and it doesn't require power or nothing like that. So. Um, I will probably end up sprucing that up. I may end up setting the dispenser like into the wall here or kind of turn it or something like that, but I don't know. I don't know. I've got to, I've got to build this and figure out exactly what I want to do there. But um, anyways, that is one thing off of our clipboard marked off. Terra Terra Bozu is done. So um, with that, I know it's about wrapping up points, so I am going to end it out here, and then I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup stuff, probably clean up a little bit of the snow maybe. And then go ahead and just record, start recording the next episode because we have so much stuff, probably the next two episodes, just straight through, um, that I can go ahead and start recording. So, But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay up to date with when new videos come out. Next episode, we will be automating plant matter and automating um, charcoal and all that stuff. So it's, it'll still be somewhat semi-automatic, but it will be much less semi-automatic than it used to be. So um, basically I'll just have to like fill it. I'm going to use diamond, I think, because we have tons of diamond. And after the episode after, we'll have more than enough diamonds. So, And we will probably start off by getting into Tinker's Constructs at long last. So, um, Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.